You ready here? Mm. All right. So hi. Right, uh, I'm John Bolzina. Uh, I work at UC Merced uh, in the Merit Writing Program. So I teach writing at the university. I also teach English at uh, where's it called? I'm getting more about that. But my presentation tonight is uh, on comic books and literacy in college classes around Merced. So this will be kind of about my use of uh, comic books and graphic novel type materials for promoting literacy um, around this area. So a little bit about me real quick, uh, just so you know, know who I am, I'm not like just someone I pulled off the street. Um, I, uh, I've been instructor at Merced College in 2006 <clears throat> to teach English in various levels, um, all the way from uh, fourth grade level uh, reading to, for adults to uh, college level um, like critical, uh, critical reading clock courses. Um, I've been a lecturer at Eastern Merced since uh, 2012, since the last year. Um, I'm still working at both. Um, I have my background in education is I have a Master of Arts in Philosophy and Literature from CSU Stanislaus in 2008. Uh, yeah, I, I was teaching college courses before I had a master's. Uh, yeah, that was that was that was a, that was a lot of fun. Um, and I have a uh, Master of Library Information Sciences uh, from UCLA that I got last year in March actually. Um, but and this is all you know, helpful for like you know getting people to read, and understand what they need. But when using comic books, I found uh, one of the reasons I started doing it was uh, I just felt love comic books. Like I, I throw a blast. I have a lot of fun using them. Um, I, you know, I buy like 20 to 30 a week, and I just love reading them and they're a blast. So I'm going to say about that. So I want to talk a little about what literacy is. Uh, we talked, we saw some uh, definitions on the screen there, and those are those are good starting points. Uh, generally, this is what people think of it as reading and writing. And what those kind of mean is the idea of reading is that you're decoding, that you're looking at some sort of information that's in a format, and then you're interpreting it and then making it into ideas inside your head. And then writing is the, the reversal of that process where you're taking those ideas in your head and managing them into some sort of code that then can be shared with someone else potentially. And that's just kind of what, what the general idea of it is. But the thing is that there's a lot more to it than that. It's not just those two things. And not just reading and writing is what literacy is. Um, a lot of the, the people in the other videos talk about how those those skills um, the skills go into other uh, fields, and I'm going to kind of mention that. Um, so this is more than just words. Um, those of uh, we have a lot of librarians in the house tonight. Uh, information there is a big one. This is a big thing we pushed at UCLA, and we pushed at UC Merced. Um, it's getting more and more prevalent in Merced College. And this is the idea of like if I look at a piece of information, a newspaper article, a statistic whatever, I can assess it on the quality, that is like, is it actually a real thing, just, or just sort of make it up. Um, I can also use, have knowledge of how to navigate around information to find information I want. Um, and the kind of, it's about the finding and the, and the quality control of information. Um, visual literacy is the idea of like, can I look at something and understand it in regards to like, the visual components of it. Uh, the room, for example, on this like board here has a visual component, like there's a gradation, I understand like certain colors and work with other colors. Um, computer literacy, uh, knowing how to use a computer, knowing how to like work your way around a computer and navigate those kind of systems, uh, becoming more and more prevalent, especially with smartphone technology uh, being so ubiquitous. Uh, uh, technology literacy is a different thing entirely, where it's not just a matter of like, this is like, how can I use a computer? This is like, how does it actually work? How do these machines work? What do they do? And this, the list goes on and on. And cultural literacy, media literacy, health literacy, ecological di literacy. Statistical literacy, math literacy, uh, critical literacy, there's all kinds of literacies. I've seen lists that are along the hundred types of literacies. And all these have in common is that once you hit a certain point in these, you um, uh, become competent enough that you can actually navigate around these. So if you encounter something in that field that you don't understand, you know how to figure out how to understand it. And that's what really a, a, a literacy is about, is figuring out, getting that person to the point where they can self-teach, and they can self-expand. Um, so, I'm, like I said, comic books and graphic novels, what are they? Uh, we all kind of have an idea of comic books and graphic novels, and uh, to draw on a very technical uh, definition from Scott McCloud in his book, Understanding Comics, an excellent book I might add, he defines comics as juxtaposed <coughs> pictorial and other images in deliberate sequence intended to convey information and or to produce an aesthetic response to the reader. <coughs> so just to translate this for the layman, as it would be. Uh, so it's like pictures that are next to each other, um, or other types of images, in a sequence that's deliberately put that way, it means someone actually made it that way, so it's random images. Uh, and they're trying to convey some sort of information to you and to provide some sort of uh, experience to you, uh, aesthetic experience. So like looking at a painting is an aesthetic experience. Um, listening to music is an aesthetic experience. So 
Um, why use these in classroom? Well, uh, there's a few good reasons. Uh, one is that this integration of multiple mediums, text and illustrations, that you're not just like, I can pick up uh, words on a page, uh, I can do that, a lot of us can do that, but our culture and our way of life is becoming increasingly integrated with the visual and uh, text-based um, interfaces. And so I want to make sure people, the students can understand how to like, compare these two things. That's, that's what a few of them sound like once in a while, too. Um, <laughs> Uh, this also it also develops skills of inference. So when you're looking at a comic book, you're seeing two images side by side, and there's something missing. Like it's not an animation, right? The thing isn't smooth, and we have to kind of figure out what's going on in between those panels. And a lot of stuff happens off the panel too, which is really interesting. Um, elaborate contextualization. So this literally is contextualization in regards to it's images with text. It's you know clone text. So the idea that they're being uh, put together, that juxtaposition, is another part of it. Um, extremely diverse content. There's something for everyone in comic books. No matter what you're into, I can find you something that you're going to like. And the other big one right now is there's a high level of interest. Um, Avengers, Batman, made a ton of money in the theaters. Man, people are stoked about comic book type stuff. So like, you can try to ride that in, our, in, in the classroom to get the students into uh, jumping on top of that, too, and running with that as well. Um, some challenges to using comics in school. Um, I've run into a few, and these are going to go in order from like the least frequent to like the more frequent, the harder ones to deal with. Um, I've had students not take it seriously. Like they're like, I want to read a comic book. Like I'm, I'm paying. My parents are paying for me to go to UC. Like why am I reading a comic book? That's stupid. And I'm like, you know, we'll get to it, and they eventually learn. That's a very small problem. Uh, publisher support. I'm sure the librarians here can talk about publisher support all day long. Um, the publishers right now in comic books aren't really concerned, you know, talking about major ones, DC, Marvel, Image, Dark Horse, the big four. They're not so concerned with like educational supplemental materials or getting materials out to educational institutions for evaluation um, to figure out if they're going to be used to use or not. Uh, this ties right into lack of instruction and knowledge and resources. Um, so once again, they're not providing uh, companion pieces that can help uh, uh, faculty at a school or a college or a university help use these in the classroom. But just as much, though, also instructors are using comic books and courses. But I don't, in my, in my opinion, they don't have the knowledge of the format that, that they need to in order to like really instruct us properly. So I think there needs to be some sort of education there amongst uh, educators. Um, and then the biggest one I have, and this is the one I point personally, is out of touch curriculum and policy. Um, I've been told no before. Um, certain schools I've worked at have said no, and the reason why is that they have a they have certain criteria that the books need to meet, and the criteria are out of date and out of touch and will not adapt to graphic novels. I gave them a 120 page graphic novel, they're like, yeah, we're going to consider this like a 30 page document. And I'm like, it's, there's, there's a lot of content to talk about here, and they're like, no. So there's a problem with it in that regard. And these can all be ramified, but it's just important to keep them in mind. Um, so I want to talk about my classroom experiences. Uh, I, I chose to use uh, the graphic of uh, the uh, trade uh, paperback, as it's called, of Batwoman Volume 1 of Hydrology. Um, this is uh, DC Comics. It's a comic series that comes out monthly. And it's uh, written by uh, two men, uh, James Williams III and uh, W. Hayden Blackman. Uh, the WP indicates that he's the writer and the penciler, because he draws this as well. And the there was a few reasons for picking this, and uh, I'll go into that here momentarily. But um, this is a trade paperback, not a graphic novel. Let me clear about that. There's a difference. Graphic novels are meant to be a, a solidified work that's actually just like by itself. A trade uh, paperback um, is a collection of issues, that were, uh, a collection of stories that were originally published as com individual comics. So this was actually issues zero through six of that one. And I chose it uh, for the main reason of multicultural co uh, content that it would appeal to a diverse selection of students. Um, the main character, uh, Kate Kane, is, is Batwoman. Okay, she's. Um, She's an openly gay woman, uh, with, uh, who's uh, uh, fairly done pretty well. She's part of a military family. She was kicked out of the military because of uh, her uh, sexuality. She's helping, uh, in the book, she's, her persona of that woman is helping the Mexican-American community who's being victimized by um, the spirit of La Llorona. And so I felt this was really relevant around this area. And um, it, it went really well, actually. Uh, I'll talk about kind of what happened with it. I'm going to show you some images from it real quick and kind of show you like what kind of complexities we can get into with this. So these are panels from the actual book, and uh, this is a double page spread. And it's pretty easy to read. We know go left to right. We can see where the words are. So we'll read here first, here then, there, there, there. We can follow the images. And it's not too bad. But then we get 
uh, it's starting to more complex stuff where here we have a scene up here of them uh, getting dressed up, ready to go out for the night to, uh, to do um, Kate and her cousin to go do uh, crime fighting. And we can see how, like, I'm looking at this and I know for a fact there's not four Batwoman on top of that rooftop. But we understand that this is image showing the image of the movement and the flow of it all in one image. This is really different than we've seen in a lot of comic books. Um, and then we get stuff like this. It's extremely, this is too diverse. Um, so it gets better. You'll, you'll like this, uh, Pam. Um, here we have the cave. I've heard going in and trying to uh, uh, in, uh, ask someone about stuff. Um, you know, and we see the cave flows in and we get the image flowing out. Um, this is really cool too. Uh, we have a, a Dia de la Muertos uh, imagery in the background. Uh, she's helping out the, uh, the kidnapping of several uh, Mexican-American children in Gotham City. Uh, we get stuff like this that's much more diverse, uh, where we have mobile art styles and the students have to sit there and look at those art styles and understand how those are telling the story. So it's more than just words that we're trying to understand. Up to stuff that's this complex and swirls and creates a lot of confusion to low-level readers, but if um, I can get students to understand this, and this happens towards the end of the novel, so it has a nice progression of simplicity to complexity. Um, they, can, they can they get really into it and they start understanding the storyline. So uh, I'll talk about my experience at Mercer College. Uh, I used this last semester in English 1A, so I'm talking freshman comp. Um, I did teach some developmental courses, but uh, I didn't have the opportunity to jump in with the graphic novels. I was trying to do it this semester, but unfortunately I got an offer from UC I couldn't uh, refuse. Um, and we had critical encounters with the text, so we kind of looked at the complexities of it. We were really concerned with like, okay, they're using like a, like uh, Mexican American culture in this in the graphic novel. Now, are they doing it well? Or you know, because I have a lot, of, a lot of students who are vocal, like, yeah, I don't see like really good Mexican American depictions on television. I don't see them really great in movies. So I'm kind of, they're kind of leery. They've been kind of, kind of gun shy. Um, and so we kind of looked at this book and saw about what did it do well. Um, and this cumulated. Uh, into argument of papers about Batwoman's use of multiculturalism. So, looking at does it do a good job, why or why not? What has done bad jobs? What do people say that like people are doing wrong, and then what is they saying they can do right? And then comparing that to this. Uh, a lot of students did stuff about the pictures of Mexican Americans in media, and I haven't had a few students, actually quite a few students do uh, genealogies of La Llorona. They actually went to the legend that, this, that these authors chose to use, um, and put it inside of, hey, where did it come from? You know, I, you know, I heard it as a kid, too, when I, when I went down to Mexico to visit my family, and my cousins told it to scare me, but now, like, but, you know, where did it really come from? I never really thought about that, and they actually went into and did research in the library and such. Um, UC Merced was a little bit different. Um, I used it in Writing 10, which is a freshman writing course. Um, once again, Critical Encounters, and they were more research-oriented, so there was a lot more regarding... Um, a lot more endeavors with the library and collaborating and research and making sure that it was well, really well developed, looking at statistics even on stuff. Um, they did stuff on Mexican Americans and LGBT stuff, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender individuals um, in media and how they've been presented. Um, and this, this book uh, has won uh, the Gay and Lesbian anti, uh, Alliance Anti-Defamation uh, Award for the last two years. And I think it's going to probably go for a third one here too. And I believe the first volume of the four was written by Rachel Maddow. Um, so, uh, oh, it gets better, I like this. But they did a lot of genealogy in La Llorona, and I even had some students come as far as, like, they actually did a really meta research thing where they actually <coughs> looked at a critical increase into the media and education. They actually did stuff like this, um, and were really concerned, like, how does it actually work? How did, it, what did they actually learn from it and analyze their own learning? Um, and then looked at, like, how, like, that compared to what other scholars have done with that. So, um, opportunities to gauge a comic. So, it's, okay, we have comics, where are they? They're out there. But the question is, like, where can I go get to them? Where can I actually, like, access them? And there's two main ways to get to comic books uh, in, uh, now. Um, the local comic store is probably one of the better points. Uh, this is where uh, you're going to have people that are very knowledgeable about comics, so they're going to know what's out there, which means that if you go in there, and you're like, hey, I want to get, I want to buy a comp book, but I don't know what. They're gonna be like, well, you know what? Like, what are you into? Well, I'm into this, this, and this. Oh, okay. Well, let me show you this, and they might find something you like. It's a good way to help uh, get that kind of engagement. Um, and you also find deals. Like, I mean, a lot of comic stores have extra stock, and they'll they have like dollar boxes or like you know certain half off or something. There's all kinds of deals to get there. Uh, really good way to access it. The other one is uh, digital comics are becoming increasingly popular. So we're talking using e-readers, like iPad, you know, even your phone, web browser, whatever uh, format you want. And the major advantage of this is accessibility anywhere. Um, the, it's, it's still, they're still hammering the kinks out of a lot of it, 
Um, there's some there's some uh, problems there, but like it, overall, it's pretty decent. It's a good way to get to read, and you can find these things. And it's nice to be able to read it anywhere, not having to carry books around, because um, they do add up. So the other major opportunity I want to share was uh, it's coming up here very shortly. Uh, the first May in every year is Free Comic Book Day. It's very similar to what we have here at the World Book Night, where uh, retailers can uh, basically bring in a bunch of free books. I think last year at Red Sky Comics we brought in, I think it was like 1,200 comic books to give out. And we had like 500 people show up. Like, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Even books out for like three hours straight. And uh, they, do, they do this all over the nation. Uh, the nearest ones at Red Sky Comics, uh, there's, I think there's two or three of these in Modesto. There's probably a half a dozen in Fresno. Um, you can go to their website, freecomicbookday.com, and check out where they have, uh, they're having an event. Um, but ours is, ours is going to be uh, on Main Street here in Merced, so you know, go come by May 4th, 11 a.m. is when we open up, and I'll be there. Uh, I'm going to be emceeing the costume contest. We're going to have an old ages costume contest. Uh, little kids can come dressed up, adults can come dressed up, and uh, we've got some prizes for them, lots of sales, and most importantly, free comics. Now, the, the question that people ask me after I say this is like, oh, free comics are going to be terrible. To do with that. Well, I'm going to show you some of the titles that are going to be available uh, at this one. That uh, and I, I can just keep up, take a look at this here. The Smurfs, uh, Disney Fairies, uh, Atomic Robo is great. Uh, Simpsons comic, Grimm, uh, Dragon Ball, SpongeBob, Ninja Turtles, Judge Dredd, <coughs> Long Stockings, uh, Mass Effect, Star Wars, Hulk, uh, Superman, uh, Batman, Walking Dead, Prince Valiant, Sonic the Hedgehog, Buck Rogers. Um, tick. I mean, all these great titles, and these are all a lot of going to be at the at Red Sky and uh, free. Um, and uh, it's a great resource. And the thing is, I can guarantee you, every single one of you saw something up there that caught your eye and you thought were interesting. Some for everyone. Um, so I just wanted you to take away a few uh, things from this presentation. Uh, one, literacy is more than words. It's, it's one is what we what we read, what we write. It's a matter of being able to navigate around those things and uh, get yourself to the point where you can then. Explore further. Um, comic books are, are all reading levels. Um, there's stuff that's really I mean, straight up for kids. Kids' comics right now are huge, getting bigger each month. I can't believe it. But um, there's something for adults too. If you really, if you want something that's like a little more, you know, uh, you know, after 10 p.m. oriented, it's there. And once again, something for everyone. There's, I, I can't stress that enough. There's got to be something there for you, uh, no matter what your level of interest is. Um, so that's uh, that's that. Uh, I'll thank you. I'd like to take some questions from the audience. If anyone has any questions about what's going on, my other things. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, now with the, the comic book, the free comic book mm -hmm. thing is downtown on Main Street. Are you certain ones, a certain number of each one, or just certain it's, one? It's a certain number of each one. Of each one? Yeah. Okay. Um, he, the, the owner does the orders, and he, he's going to bring in basically what. Um, what he thinks will, what people will want. Like certain, a few of those books, I know he's probably not going to bring in, not all of them, but that's all the ones that have been solicited as free mm -hmm. comic books. Yeah, so last year, actually the coolest one we had was uh, from Arkeo, who's the publisher. They had a mouse guard, a cool little book about little mice that like, uh, kind of fancy settings, it's all fun. They actually gave out a hardbound comic book about yay big and about yay thick. Couldn't believe it, it was, it was amazing. Wow. I got mine quick. Now at that particular address, how many did they give away? Uh, I think this year he ordered around 1,400. And we, it's a limitation of three per person, though. And we just limit it. Um, there's a few stores that will, won't limit it, just like everyone comes in as models that they want and get one of each. But um, we do limit to three. We do limit to three per person now. Because um, we want to make sure everyone has a chance to get something. So. Good question, though. Anything else?